Hey there, Internet. What's up? It's me, Gene. I bring you greetings from the real world. So, put the cell phones away. Stop the texting. That means you too. Because I've got something to tell you. I'm here today to tell you about a gift that every one of you has. But not all of you are using. Maybe you don't even realize you have it. But you do. That gift is the gift of imagination. Now some people claim, I ain't got no imagination. I have, like, no creativity. Nah, bruh, I just ain't gifted that way. <coughs> but essentially, this is just a misunderstanding about how broad the range of that gift and its applications truly is. I mean, sure, some people's gift of imagination may not be quite as bright as others. Some only have a single candle watt bulb. Some only use it once a year when they make their birthday wish. And others, well, they have a twisted imagination. But everyone has one. You use your imagination for far more than just drawing pictures, writing novels, producing movies, or composing music. You use imagination in a thousand different ways in the course of a single day without even realizing it. Programmers use it to solve problems with your computer. You use it to find an alternate route to work when construction is tying up traffic. Scientists use imagination when they deduce from the things we know to figure out the things we don't know. But more than all this, and certainly more than a mere tool for creativity in the arts, imagination is a fundamental element of how we support one another as members of a successful community. Now I realize I'm not the first person to sing praises to the virtue of imagination. Imagine I'm John Lennon It's easy if you try Not exactly what I meant, but okay. I'm thinking more along the lines of Edison, Einstein, Isaac Newton, Emily Dickinson, William Shakespeare, George Bernard Shaw, Walt Disney, Lewis Carroll, Carl Sagan. Even Sir Francis Bacon had this to say about imagination. Imagination was given to man to compensate him for what he is not, and a sense of humor to console him for what he is. Imagination is the most practical way we have of carrying out the scriptural mandate to bear one another's burdens. Pain thrives in isolation. Those in the midst of it have a natural tendency to feel alone in their darkness. The reassurance of support is essential to the survival of the individual. We need community to make it through our trials. Have you ever heard someone say to their friend, I understand what you're going through? Well, this isn't some smug claim of omniscience. What they are expressing, if clumsily, is that though they have not literally gone through the exact circumstances that led their friend to their present troubled state, they can at least conceive an approximation of the general sensations based upon the experiences they have encountered combined with an engaged imagination. An actor goes through much the same process in the course of his labors to place his mind and emotions inside the body of the character it is his job to portray. Some actors try to place themselves literally in those situations to more accurately depict them, but this is a mistake. Back in 1947, I spent six months in a mental hospital to play Lenny and Mice and Men. Yeah, brother. I, I used so much weed to get into the character, I fried both my brain cells. When an actor leans too heavily on such methods, they risk losing control of the performance and can steer the story completely off proper course and into the actor's personal life and foibles. Not only that, but these extreme attempts to relive a character's life and experiences can be psychologically damaging to an actor. There's a movie that came out this year called Kate Plays Christine. Supposedly it's a documentary. The filmmakers followed an actress named Kate as she put herself under extreme pressure to relive the psychological life of a real-life woman named Christine who killed herself live on television in 1974. The film purports to show just how psychologically draining this was on the actress. Now whether or not this film was actually a documentary, we have plenty of real world examples that show the same sort of thing. Remember when Heath Ledger died while filming The Dark Knight? Who knows how much of that tragedy was his personal demons and how much was his 
trying to be the evil, nihilistic character he portrayed. I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, what does all this talk about actors have to do with me? In much the same way as an actor can get caught up in the process of reliving a character's experiences, some people can do the same thing when they're trying to understand the lives and experiences of others. Think of the book Black Like Me, where a white man had his skin temporarily altered chemically so that he could travel for a time incognito to better understand the black experience. The results were much like those in the movie A Gentleman's Agreement, where Gregory Peck tries to see what life would be like if he was a Jew like his friend John Garfield. It was illuminating as an experiment, but ultimately it was a bit of a gimmick. The point is this, it's not necessary for the average person to literally walk the mile in his neighbor's shoes in order to have compassion for his plight or to understand his worldview. What is needed here is a combination of experience and imagination. For the actor, imagination is necessary to apply general experiences to the specifics of the story of the play or movie that he's performing in. And for the man who seeks to understand the troubles of his friend, or enemy, imagination bridges a similar gap between the differences in their life experiences. The practice of imagining the pains of others is not only healthy, but necessary for our social well-being. Indeed, in one sense, when a person says, I can't imagine what you must be going through, it seems somehow disingenuous. Is it intellectual laziness? Temerity? Why are we so unwilling to experience the kind of pain that such an act of sympathetic imagination would bring? I get it, it's not easy. So when someone actually makes the effort, shouldn't we be more grateful? When someone expresses sympathies or condolences, what they are or should be communicating is something along these lines. Out of love, I have made an effort to consider what you have gone through, and to share in your pain, sorrow, or affliction. Sure, that's not as catchy on a greeting card, but what we need to understand is this. They have performed an act of compassionate imagination, and one which should be practiced every day in all our encounters and dealings with our fellow men. And that means more than just feeling bad when your friends are hurt. This concept applies to your enemies. It applies to your political opponents. We must make an effort to put ourselves in a position to see the world from, from their, their point of view. In the book Ender's Game, this is the central premise summed up in the following passage. In that moment, when I truly understand my enemy, understand him well enough to defeat him, then in that very moment, I also love him. I think it's impossible to really understand somebody, what they want, what they believe, and not love them the way they love themselves. Compassionate imagination is the second greatest act of love a man can show for another. Greater love has no man than this, but that he laid down his life for his friends. Next to that, imagining it is a distant second. But hey, if you can get second best, why settle for less? Think how much nicer a place the world would be. Imagine.